Hello everyone, I'm Anthemore Central and I imagine that a lot of you, when you saw this repaint released on the Fellows Film forums, knew that this video was coming. I'm Anthemore Central and welcome back to OMSI 2 Great Grundorf 2. Great Grundorf 2 is one of our favourite maps on the channel. Um, it's one of the ones that we pretty much exclusively film on here. And you can't find um, this many Great Grundorf video, um, Great Grundorf 2 Leftcraft videos um, anywhere else on YouTube. Um, so here we are once again. Um, I was looking forward to this repaint being released. I knew it would happen. Um, and now it has. And we can have a little drive on Great on GG2 LHT. So um, I'll LHD, whoever you speak to, um, it might depend. So in front of you is the green Great Grundorf repaint. And that means we're not doing directly an airport service. I mean, we are doing some sort of airport run, but I'm quite certain that um, these ones, I believe, are... I mean, it comes up as orange, um, but I believe some of them do use the green livery. Because unfortunately, um, we don't. We only have a green livery and not an orange one. And you all know how I do love to do the more express routes on the map. So this is the, um, by the looks of it, the aircraft engineering, a.k.a. the maintenance area. Um, and in this video, we're going to be driving the P1 or E1 service. Sorry, not the P1. The P1 is the port one. We're doing the E1 service from the maintenance area to Grundorf Expo. Um, I haven't, I don't believe I've done this route before. So I'm quite excited to see as all those locations look like they might be quite interesting. And um, the route itself is timetabled at just under 20 minutes as one of the shorter routes on the E network of services. The rest of them are like 45 minutes in length. Um, so unfortunately, um, this specific um, recording, I don't have time to drive them, and so I'll have a look drive this. Brief look on the inside, you'll notice that this is the VETN variation. I believe this is the one I've been on, um, the Go North East one. And you can see the seats on it are your standard green Greg Grundorf 2 regulation seats, um, and the, all the interior floors, panel and everything is also a dark green, so it does look quite nice. The V-paint itself being used so quite nice and standard, and the only thing I would say is for some reason they just seem quite a bit drop off in green livery on the front compared to the sides. And it does make it a little bit unique. Reminds me of some of these sort of V10L V-paints um, and things um, in the UK. The use of the Starlings are this year, the 2000s, only similar buses. So for the Great Grundorf 2 repaint, you can download it um, for free on the Fellows Fund forums, and it include it is included on the R B O U the R B O the R W K Ws and the T C T the C T C B W the V T N that we're driving and the F and the W F B Ws variations. You'll notice them in the listings. At least, at least one of them is your door. Um, I, I did say initially in the previous video we were going to drive a dual door baby and I worked out and sort of did the research and realised that there's some single door ones out there you don't tend to get to drive and um, that many single door buses in Great Grundorf 2 liveries so I thought why not. So we are actually now late um, so we better actually make a move. So I'll put the blind up. Oh, look at that, that looks There we go, I will pull up to the stop and just make sure that there's no, no last minute runners by moving the clock forward a second. Weird that the first time there's actually no, not some massive people waiting. Um, that is a bit odd um, for a, a great run off too. Um, Okay, I'm going to have to put the arrows straight on because otherwise I'm going to have no clue where I'm going. So I've never actually driven this route on Great Grundorf 2. Great Grundorf 2 is Grundorf and the original map, but intensely expanded. Um, it's going back to sort of, as you can see, all the markings as well um, on one side of the road. Um, it goes back to basically when they made Great Grundorf. Um, the 3D transport studios, the SIG group that were, that were responsible for the first Empire 400 that we had. They're a Hong Kong based team um, and they um, built Great Gundorf 1 that was an expanded of the base map for sort of fictitious places based in sort of Berlin locations, or not Berlin, Hong Kong sort of 
um, style uh, routes. And then it went to Great Good Lord 2 and got the livery. And then somebody um, made the Great Grand Lord 2 left path variation that we're driving in this video. So the Great Grand Lord 2, there's been a couple of different variants um, of it out. This is the more commonly known one. This is the one for sort of like the repaints on the Fellas Film Forum that's made for. Um, for this specific variant. As I said, I've never driven this route before, um, so I really don't know what to expect. Although so far, I do kind of agree. I'm quite used to driving all the motorway routes and the ones that go to the old Franklin House and um, Wampoff and all of that lot. And so it's quite nice to drive these ones on the totally sort of new section. This map is quite a few years old, and to do just better than a manual we drive it. Pacific, not specific. Oh, it's been a long, it's been a long day. Where is the sunlight? I'm trying to say, oh, it's behind us. Kind of realising that was screenshots and things. We will also notice that with this map, although this sort of Hong Kong names, if you drive across with the mountains, the Hong Kong mountains also work. Um, you'll notice that there's places like the BBC um, buildings on here. We're about to pass a Royal Mail building and things like that. So it's quite a cool map to drive, and there's a, a because I know we oh, don't want to mount the curve. You will also notice a couple of lag points on it as well from time to time um, because of how big the map is. Just going to put the people up a little bit so that hopefully we do actually pick some people up. Um, that's kind of kind of the goal here. Because we do an air mail at 1512. We are actually early so let's just... Oh, one, uh, dude. We might, in fairness, have a pretty empty run on this. I think there might be a pretty, pretty empty shuttle bus. There you go, the standard thing that does it. We might actually just get to whiz all the way up there with nobody on. It's quite unusual for the map. Every so often we do have empty runs on here. I think it might be partial because um, I may have ever so slightly forgotten um, to change some of the things around on this route. But that's a way we can still enjoy the scenery. Rather nice and nice and empty jaunt around. I do fear that this might be one of those routes um, that gives a lot more time than it needs to. station for me. We can just pretend it's like playing on strike or something. And that's why there's nobody here. Although we'll remember for future runs that we do around here. And to change the cubes around.
around here on my picture. Just be an empty day. Never know my optimism. Um, not for short lived. It doesn't look to like anyone waiting around. Might be the bus in front. Oops, that might be the bus in front. How early are we? Oh, we're only a minute. We're not actually. Although I think that's the wrong. Ground transportation centre. I think. What do we do here? Ground transportation. Yeah, fifteen nineteen. All our passengers. <laughs> We're just going to run dead all the way around. Oh no, no, there's more people. No, there's definitely more people. There we go, there's that. There's that. And all of these people are going for the next five minutes of this room. There's only five more minutes of it left. Although, judging by how quick we did the rest of it, um, I wouldn't be sure it's going to be the last five minutes. services and then following that end up taking very inappropriate buses on the motorway um, that are limited in speed that never really goes well. So it's like for example we took the Evo set of Decker on there, the B5 LH, and it was just absolutely gutless going up those hills. Stuff like that they've been a lot more a lot more ideal. stuff on this map. Well, 
what I do really like about this route specifically is I am actually able to get a bit of power out of the bus. Um, it wouldn't be ideal for anything like the Evo Seti because it would just that bit where we're going past all the planes would just be incredibly sluggish. But for something like this, once you get it going, it does have a bit of power behind it. It is actually really nice. I'm reporting to the bus in front again. We must all go to the expo from the transportation centre. So clearly the busiest part of these of these routes um, has accidentally replicated by myself. Especially judging by the fact we're following another bus. nice to work like sort of on the airport side of things as well. I know we had the airport map um, released many years ago, the right map. I remember driving that and thinking how good it was and then sort of thinking well why don't we have one, a fictitious one for the UK, um, just like it was in right path because you do sometimes forget how much there is to a used to sort of a UK airport sort of operation based on sort of the service side of things because there's all the private companies like the hotels, airside, like people um, sort of short stay, long stay car parks and things like that. Now we're going to go past you while you wait for the person to walk in front of you. also notice all of the road signs are British style. I oh, she pointed that one out earlier. Yes, they're all British style signs. So it's like a, it's like a strange fictitious hybrid is it? too late for that bus stop. So let's hope that wasn't the one you were wanting. Yeah, I think I chose the wrong coloured bus for this. <laughs> I think it should have been an orange one, really. So yeah, I was never expecting it to be a long run. I just wasn't quite expecting it to be that short, um, in, in brute honesty. Um, still a, a, a nice route, regardless. Um, and it, it didn't last as long as last as long as I thought the route would. That does something. I wanted to see if I could get the ramp working as it's an, an automatic ramp, but we'll look at that for another time. So yeah, that was the E1 service um, between um, where we've just come from and where we are now. Uh, <laughs> basically across the airport. Um, a very, very nice route to drive. Um, I mean, it was just surprisingly short in length. I just was expecting a little bit more to the route than what, than what it was. Um, but these things happen. And it was still a nice route nevertheless.
So yeah, and the bus itself performed lovely on the route, especially over those long stretches past all the planes. Um, I quite enjoyed it. And even though it was a short service, still an enjoyable one to drive. So if you have enjoyed this video, do be sure to click that like button so that more people can find it and enjoy like you have. And if you haven't already, do be sure to subscribe to the Andamore Central YouTube channel to support more content um, that I record and the stuff I film and where I travel. And for more um, like this from the simulation world as well as the real life bus industry. I will be leaving the links to the free map in the description below. The map link quite old um, and goes through YouTube videos. So if you, for whatever reason, it doesn't work, and my apologies, I, I, as I say, it's the um, more recent link for the map that I know. And I'll be linking um, the um, sort of I'll be linking together um, the free repaint pack that you can download that I used in this video, as well as the payware bus created by um, the very talented Studio Polygon. Once again, I'd like to thank you all for watching. I really hope you've enjoyed this video, and I will see you all in the next one I make. Goodbye for now. Bye.